What is DMSO, Amanda? Let's back it all the way up. What <laughs> is this stuff we're talking about? Yes, uh, it's dimethyl sulfoxide and DMSO, so that it's a chemical name essentially. But this is a substance, a liquid substance that's coming from trees. So if you think about the structure and strength of trees, they have sulfur bonds that hold the tr the lignin strong. So basically, DMSO is what makes the trees stand upright and strong. And when the pulp and paper industry comes and takes a tree and tries to get the softening aspects, it needs to remove the, the lignin and the DMSO inside of it. And that's a waste product actually from this industry. So then we found benefit or, or historically benefit. This is back in like 1865 in Russia when they first was like, oh, this is cool stuff. And then it got shelved until basically the 70s or 50s. But, you know, really it didn't come into the forefront of knowledge until pretty much 70s kind of thing. And it was very controversial because it came on the heels of the thalidomide scandal. And the FDA and all these agencies were super shy about coming out with the drug right when people were freaked out about that. And so it got heavily prosecuted and persecuted as a drug. There's actually a really good book called The Persecution of DMSO that you can read to learn about the weird history of how we even have it now, which is still unknown. I mean, people still don't don't really know the term. It got pulled into veterinary medicine more popularly. It is a highly studied substance because it is a perfect solvent and it doesn't damage the tissues. So what you can do is change the freezing temperature of the tissues so that when you put them in the freezer, the cells do not burst. This is used in transplant therapy as a result and all sorts of chemical laboratory, um, you know, science because of its ability to pull solvents out without altering them permanently. Uh, it's very valuable for those industries. So when I realized how heavily studied it was and that yet no one knew what it was, and even in naturopathic college, we only learned a tidbit about it in sports medicine because it's also heavily used in sports and in animal racing, like horse racing. They all know about their, yeah, I know about that since the 70s. You know, you'll always hear them say that, but nobody else seems to but really, even in the UK, it used to be in the emergency room because you could get people out of, you know, severe tachycardia, severe, you know, gastrointestinal issues, bleeding issues, whatever. You could use it in, you know, in the emergency or if they had a heart attack or a stroke, that was one of the main uses to have it uh, because it opens blood flow. So it can prevent ischemic problems, um, but it is so versatile that that's why you really want to learn about it first, right? Because it does so many things. It's transdermal, it's anti-inflammatory, It's a, it dissolves blood clots, it mm. supports blood itself, it moves nutrients around the body, it removes wastes from the body, it increases glutathione, which is our master antioxidant. It just it regrows your hair. <laughs> it's anti-aging. Actually, my most famous product is called Facelift in a Jar, and it's a blend with DMSO. So I had made all these creams, natural creams and things. And then I thought, hmm. when I found out about DMSO, I said, what, what would happen, you know, if I put these blends together? Miracles happened. I mean, it just takes the nutrients deeper into the tissue so that it can heal old scars and wounds and all kinds of things. And they're beautiful synergies together. So I started using DMSO even as like a tincture material, a tincture solvent, so that I was extracting other parts of the plant and getting really good results with that as well. So we're like babies in this still. I mean, there's so much we could still study from a natural and holistic approach to medicine and extractions and utilizations for all sorts of blends. 